Hey guys, what's up? Well, you know, uh, it's part of the no tripod thing here. I left it in the other car, and the car's in somewhere I can't get to right now. But, um, you know, I was thinking of video ideas sometimes, and I had one come up recently. And what I thought about doing is a couple videos about the two worst car engines of all time, according to me. And this is my opinion, you know. Uh, your opinion may differ, of course, but ew, try to get that glare off my glasses. Looks weird on it. But, um, and uh, you know, there's a lot of things that can make um, make an engine be bad or, or hard to live with or whatever, or not enjoyable to own. You know, just be a headache and. But what I had to consider was, is I had to consider a few different things like reliability, uh, uh, cost of ownership, cost of repair, uh, how well the manufacturer stood behind the, the engine, whatever it was in, that kind of thing. And that, um, that was kind of the main criteria. You know, there can always be engines that have like a bad head gasket or or a leak or you know or they just don't make much power even if an engine doesn't make much power it can still be a reliable engine and serve for many years and many miles so that doesn't necessarily characterize as being a bad engine you might not like it but um so i thought this over and i already had the candidates uh in mind several different ones but i wound up with two different ones and this video is going to be about number number two, the one in second place. It's to me, from my opinion, the second worst automotive engine of all time in recent years, I guess we'd say. And that is, of course, as you see by the title, the Cadillac North Star. And I used to really be a fan of these engines. I thought they were a really good, good engine. Um, but... As time has went on, they have tended to be uh, unreliable, and um, just a few different factors. But uh, th that engine came out in 1993 in like an Eldorado, and then in '94, all the Cadillacs got that engine. You know, all the Cadillacs by then are front-wheel drive. So, uh, excuse me, except for one, the rear-wheel drive Fleetwood. It was not. Um, but all the rest of them were front-wheel drive, so they got the North Star engine. And, you know, for 93, 20 years ago, 94, um, it was a pretty advanced engine. Uh, you know, 4.6 liter, dual overhead cam, all aluminum V8, uh, 6,500 RPM red line, uh, 275 horsepower. Uh, it was up to 300 horsepower a little bit later on. Uh, had a had a cylinder deactivation feature so that if the engine ran hot and overheated uh, it would start shutting different cylinders off to air cool them and let you limp in probably like 50 miles or so to to uh, to get help without being stranded so really you know on paper it looked like a really good engine and it should have been and I think it really fundamentally the design is very sound I think it would have been a, a great engine except that that engine fell victim to General Motors. Uh, I don't know if you'd say cost cutting theory or just basic engineering stupidity in one little spot, and that's what doomed it. Um, now, I this was touched on earlier. I said about reliability and um, those engines, those North Stars have a couple Achilles heels. You know what an Achilles heel is, that's part of your body, but Achilles heel in terminology that means that it's something that's going to um, be a, a problem, an ongoing problem. And the problem with the, with the problem with the problems that the North Star has are, I didn't say that right, I'm sorry, the problem with the problems the North Star has is um that was getting me confused now now i gotta think what i was gonna say the big deal about it is that they're expensive to fix 
and they're hard to fix. And the number one item that goes wrong, the number one problem that a North Star Cadillac engine has are the head gaskets. I'm sure mechanics, any you guys that are mechanics in a mechanic shop have seen those things come in. You've seen dead ones on the side of the road. You've seen dead ones listed on Craigslist. They all say the same thing, overheats, overheats. It's got a little thing on the dashboard. It's a little message center and it comes up, it says, uh, stop engine overheat or something along that lines. And then after it cools back down, it will promptly say change engine oil, you know. So they start having problems overheating and, and um, you know, like I said, it's been lumped into being the head gaskets, but it's not exactly the head gaskets. In fact, really, the head gaskets don't have anything to do with it. But what it is, is I'll give you a little bit of backstory on that engine. Um, General Motors, for some unexplained reason, decided that it was a good idea to thread steel head bolts, steel head bolts, into an aluminum block, uh, directly into the aluminum block. Now, of course, you know aluminum is a strong material, uh, like tensile straight strong, but it's not as strong as steel. So you're talking about threading these head these head bolts into an, an aluminum block. That's one thing. Now, the other part of that is um, any of you guys have taken chemistry or read up on you know chemical reactions and things like that you know that what happens between two dissimilar metals they corrode now you think about that you take a steel head bolt in an aluminum engine which is in proximity to coolant a liquid what on earth do you think is going to happen and how it's, it boggles the mind, guys, when you think about this, how GM Cadillac is supposed to be the most the tip top of what General Motors can do techn technologically. Screwed that up. And how they screwed up is air cooled Volkswagen engines, like in a Beetle or an old, old bus or a Carmen Ghia, uh, they use magnesium alloy engine blocks. And magnesium is a soft metal, it's even softer than aluminum. Uh, so they have the same deal. They have to thread a um, uh, a steel, a strong steel, rather a head bolt. It's bolts. Well, it is head bolts, but they hold the heads and the cylinder jugs and everything to the block. They have to thread these things in there. And, and 50 years ago, in 19, the early 1960s, they were doing that. They tried that idea. They tried to thread those things directly in there, and they started being pulled out because the threads in the block are not strong enough to hold the steel head bolts in, you know, to stay torqued. So those head bolts would lose their torque and then it would all, kind, all kinds of problems would happen. So what VW did 40 years ago was they developed this little thing. All it is is a steel insert that threads into the block and then the head bolt threads into that steel insert. It's called a case saver. And that's a standard thing you do anytime you rebuild a Volkswagen air cooling engine. You put in case savers if it doesn't already have them. Now, there again, think about that. Cadillac didn't do this. That was a simple, simple, simple thing they could have done. How much, how many, you know, I don't know how many head bolts are on one of those things. Probably 20 to 25 head bolts, we'll say. They couldn't put those little steel inserts in there to hold the, the head bolts down make it stronger and keep them from uh, corroding yet all these foreign car makers have successfully ran all aluminum engines for years and years and years and years they've done this managed to do this without those kind of problems yet Cadillac I'll invent a word here but they stupided it up that bad doing this and that just boggles the mind they hear they had a great engine and they cheaped out so bad they wouldn't even do that so what happens is you know it's not nearly you know there's a twofold problem and I just want you to understand what the problem is the problem is is that 
those head bolts start to corrode away and when they do that they start losing their clamping ability so the head starts to lift under pressure when it starts to lift under pressure it starts to seep coolant and it gets coolant into the cylinders and so that ain't a good thing so that's what happens that's why they start running hot it's just like a blown head gasket but the head gasket wasn't what caused the problem it was the stupid head bolts so what happens also is when you take the head bolts out of them nine times out of ten they've been in there for 10 or 15 years when you start backing the head bolts out it brings the, the aluminum threads with them so you've got these holes in the engine block that are stripped out now they have to be repaired re-threaded okay well if all that ain't a, a, a pain the problem the next problem with the Cadillac North Star is even working on the stupid thing because those engines are so wide and so big and wide you ever look under the hood of one you'll know what I'm talking about that you cannot it's not like a normal car like that Chevrolet back there or something like that you can just pull the heads off with the engine in the car you can't you can probably get them out with it in there but the problem is when you have to fix those those head bolt holes the angle is such that you can't adequately you have to be very 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 extremely precise doing that because head bolt that has to be it's a you know what can you say about it you, you have to be very precise about it so you just really to do the job correctly to fix one of those turds you can't do it with it in the car you have to drop the engine out and the engine don't come out the top what you have to do is you have to drop the whole engine and transmission and front cradle and front suspension as an assembly um, and I know there might be some people saying oh you know but that's the way most people do it <clears throat> so that means you have to disconnect the cooling system the brake system the steering the upper suspension mounting points the wiring um, I don't know if I said air conditioning but you have to discharge the air conditioner and disconnect it just this horrible 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 amount of work so, uh, hang on a second, guys. I've got to plug something in here real quick. So, anyway, yeah, this is like a horrible amount of work. To, never mind, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, to do that. So, you have to pull the whole engine out and then uh, to repair those things. And guess what the repair is? The repair, you guessed it, reaming out those head bolt holes and putting those steel inserts in. They're not called time certs they're actually the good ones are thick steel ones that go in there and that fixes it but the problem is with it is you can fix it and get the whole thing put back together and you spent probably two thousand dollars to fix a car that's probably barely worth twenty five hundred dollars now because those cars everybody knows they break and they're so devalued now nobody wants one they're all scared of them so yeah they're a nightmare and plus on top of that they also got one further problem and that is they have a what's called a mid plate gasket around midway up the engine block and that thing will start leaking oil all over everything you know yeah you got a Cadillac that leaks oil on your garage go figure you know a little twig of hair there but you got a Cadillac that leaks oil and leaks water so no no wonder that everybody's sick of those things now because guess what fix the mid plate gasket you guessed it the engine has to come out again so by all means do not ever buy a North Star equipped vehicle never 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 you'll be nothing but a nightmare I don't care how new the thing is because even the new ones GM never fixed that problem all it is they say they change the thread on the head bolts to make them a little bit stronger you know basically that's what they said so don't ever buy one never save yourself the trouble and the headache all right guys talk to you later i'm gonna do one more video on the number one worst engine of all time see you